And welcome back. You're watching the Steve Malsberg Show. I'm Bill Tucker filling in for Steve. Don't fret. Don't worry. Steve will be back tomorrow. I'm joined now by Jed Babin. He is the former Deputy, Deputy Undersecretary of Defense for President George H.W. Bush. He's a contributing editor to the American Spectator and co-author of the BDS War Against Israel, the Orwellian campaign to destroy Israel through boycott, divestment and sanctions movement. Amen, and we could spend an entire segment on that. But uh, Jed, for right now, I want to get started with some fresh news over the weekend that goes into a kind of theme for me that I, I'm concerned about, and I'm sure you are as well. As everyone knows by now, the president flew into China for a G20 meeting. It wasn't like a surprise visit. It wasn't unexpected. He landed. The Chinese didn't roll out the stairs so he could deboard the plane. And instead, Ambassador Rice was, uh, was met by an irate, angry Chinese official on the runway. Why we didn't just go, fine, we'll see you later, and leave is beyond me. I don't understand why this president doesn't choose to exercise power when he has the opportunity to do so. Then he, the president suffered an insult at the hands or the mouth of uh, the Philippine president. He chose to stand up against the Philippine president, I guess because they're a much smaller, tinier nation. Do we have some kind of weird problem here? You couple that with the fact that we feel like we need to pay ransom to get sailors released. I see a huge problem here. I'd love to have your take on this. Well, it's been a huge problem ever since January of 2009, Bill. This is exactly what Obama has been doing. He's been throwing away American power around the world. He's been alienating our allies and you know, basically embracing our enemies. And this is what the man has done consistently. It's his ideology that's the problem. It is his ideology that America is too strong and too central to the world. And he wanted to cut down our status. And he's done a very good job of it. So for eight and a half years now, almost nine years, we've been in the position where America has been diminishing in the eyes of the world, which, as Mr. Rumsfeld used to say, weakness is provocative. It's much, very, very much a greater danger to us. Well, what is the point of having power? What is the point of being the most powerful nation in the world if you don't exercise and don't use it? I think that that leads to disrespect. I think immediately other countries look at that and think they don't know what they're doing. They don't know how to do what the, to lead. So we're just going to take over. And that is what has happened. We have been replaced on the world stage by players who don't share our values, who frankly don't want to take the world in the kind of direction that we do. And yes, I am an American exceptionalist, and I don't make any apology for that. Well, I'm the same way. But, you know, you mentioned some of these people who are our adversaries. And let's just name names. Vladimir Putin is filling the political and geopolitical vacuum that Obama has left. The right. Chinese are asserting themselves throughout the South China Sea in uh, derogation of nations from Vietnam to the Philippines. And we have Al Qaeda and ISIS and however many other terrorist groups you want to name becoming ascendant in Western Europe. They have threatened us. They are operating here. We have seen several attacks right here in our country. And this is what you get when it's not just the refusal to use power. And don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. I'm all for bombing the snot out of most of the people who deserve it. <laughs> and there's pretty yeah. few that I don't think deserve it. But the point really comes down to we have to be smart and exercising our power. You can't just pull the trigger all the time, although I kind of like the idea. But the fact of the matter is we have to be able to assert ourselves and assert our power and assert our influence, not just in terms of our own interests, but in those of our allies who we seek to embrace. Not all of our allies are worth it, but some of our allies are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I, look, we're not, we're not, there's no point in being a bully, but you have power. You should use it at the appropriate time and at the appropriate place for the people and for the allies, as you say, that we want to align ourselves with and show strength behind. That's President Obama. We've got an election coming up, and we have two people running. Hillary Clinton, who is Secretary of State, has a devastating record as being a part of that. If she's elected, do we have any prayer of seeing this corrected, our, our, our uh, strength being derided if she's made president of the United States? Not only a no, but hell no. I mean, I, I took one for the team, Bill. I actually read her book, Hard Choices. God, it was a thumping bore. But the fact of the matter is you can read all 600 and some odd pages of that thing, and there's no evidence in, in her own words. There is no evidence whatsoever that anybody listened to her when she visited all these world leaders. 
When you look at what she said about Vladimir Putin, the only time he got interested in what she was saying is when he was pra she was praising him for what he was doing to preserve the Siberian tigers. You know, this is what you get when you have people like Clinton and people like Obama. You do not have a strong America. You do not have someone representing America around the world who is interested in preserving our interests and, quite frankly, our national security. Well, not only that, Jed, you also have a woman who is Secretary of State, and it's documented. This isn't me making up a story, who has a foundation to whom foreign countries with decidedly different values than us in terms of women, in terms of civil rights, in terms of you just name it, who they make contributions to that foundation and they get favors done for them. I think that's a horrible president, precedent, excuse me, to set for somebody who wants to be president of the United States. Well, it's not just a horrible precedent. It's against the bloody law, for heaven's sake. You know, I, I've talked about this many times. If you have, as they do, the Clinton Foundation being a pay-to-play organization, if more than 50 percent of the people who she visited with as Secretary of State, and it was that number, were donors to the Clinton Foundation, there's a pay-to-play aspect of it. Title 18, Sections 201, 207, and 208, it's a federal felony to do oh, that sort of thing. Oh, Jed, you're so boring. It always I comes know, down I'm to old law. Doesn't it? <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry. I, I'm very old fashioned. I insist on enforcing the law. Amen on old fashioned. Jed, thank you. Jed Babin, thanks so much for being here today. My pleasure. All right.